All right, how we doing, guys? Um, what we're going to be doing here today is uh, brake pad and rotor change on a 2013 Kia Sorento. Um, it's my wife's car. Um, went to get it inspected, and they uh, they told us that the brakes and rotors needed to be done, and I won't pay anybody to do those for me. Um, save a lot of money doing it yourself. So um, I looked online, found some videos on YouTube about Kias and stuff, but I didn't find anything specific to this car. Um, so I figured I'd uh, make the vi uh, make a video. I did make a video a couple months back about um, the front uh, pads. We only did the pads with that one. Um, again, today we're going to be doing the rotors and the pads on the rear of the vehicle. So um, we'll go ahead and get started with that. Um, what we're going to be using is, uh, as far as pads, they're the, the CarQuest Wherever Platinum. Um, hopefully you can see that in the, the video there. Um, pretty good deal on them. They got pretty good reviews, and this is what we put on the front as well a um, couple months ago. Been pretty happy with them. Um, limited lifetime warranty. Got them at Advanced Auto, um, and we actually got them 20% off, plus they're actually uh, offering a rebate as well, so we got them pretty cheap, actually. Uh, as far as the rotors go, we're pairing it with uh, the CarQuest um, wherever um, rotor. Um, that was part of the rebate, um, so... We'll see how they uh, they should pair pretty well since they're made from the same company. Um, should be pretty good. So I'm going to pause the video, get the car all jacked up, and we'll get started. Um, before I do that, actually, just real quick, so you know, tool-wise, basically all you're going to need for this, um, Phillips head screwdriver um, with a pretty uh, decent-sized bit on it. Um, that's going to be for the rotor. There's two Phillips head screws holding the rotor in place. Um, I'll show that on the video. Um, so basically, Phillips head screwdriver, 14-millimeter socket, um, and then may, maybe a hammer to get the rotor off if the rotor is kind of stuck. It's a 2013, so we shouldn't have too much of a problem with it. But a um, couple other minor tools, which I'll show you in the, in the video, but really not much to it. It's actually a pretty easy job. So I'm going to pause the video. We'll get it jacked up and ready to go. All right, guys. Um, got the car jacked up. Obviously, you're looking at the, um, the rear driver side. Um, hub there and uh, and rotor um so i'm just going to take you through step by step and uh feel free to um, leave any comments questions concerns um below the video there um so here we go first step i'm going to do is uh those two phillips head screws that i mentioned um they are right here and here can't miss them um, i'm gonna i'm gonna loosen those up first before i do anything just to get them loose you have to get them out of there um, off there to, to remove the rotor, which we're obviously not doing yet, but just going to loosen them up just to get them done. So again, just the regular Phillips head screwdriver here. Now keep in mind, these can be on here very snug. There we go. Probably going to have to torque on them a little bit just to get them to, to come loose there. And actually, when I did the other, I've already done the other side. Oh, that one was actually loose. Um, when I did the other side, they were actually so tight, I actually stripped one. And <laughs> for some reason, it stripped really easy. Um, so what I did was I actually, I'm, I'm replacing them um, with, with uh, obviously, same size um, bolt there. But uh, I, I'm just replacing them for some reason. I don't know if Kia just decided to use... Uh, a cheap bolt there or something I really don't know but the other side it stripped incredibly easy um, and I actually had to use my speed out which um, that if you don't have one of them they come in handy I had to use my speed out to get it out of there uh, but so I, I did I am going to replace them with other um, bolts that I that I just picked up at Lowe's so all right those are out so next step is we're going to loosen up the um, the caliber and, and get that out of the way so we can get at the caliber bracket. We have to remove that whole assembly to, to get the, the rotor off there. So the caliber is basically um, held on with two bolts. There's one here, one here. You know, let me see if I can get a, get a good picture of them there. This, this is the caliper right here. It's held on by this right there and there's another one right there hopefully you can that comes out okay in the video um, those are actually the sliding pins which slides the caliber back and forth um, so we have to remove that remove them too to get at the bracket that we have to remove so we are 
we're just gonna grab our 14 millimeter socket here. And one thing you want to do, well, you know, I'm not going to get ahead of myself there. I'll, I'll go over that in a, in a little bit there, what I was going to tell you there. So basically just set those aside. And then your, your caliber slides right off there. That piston right there, we're going to have to depress that in a little bit. I'll show you exactly how to do that. Um, but that's the caliber right there. Now what you want to do, this is connected to the brake line. So you don't want to just leave that hanging. It does have a little bit of weight to it. So what I do is, of course I don't have it within reach. Oh. Bear with me one second here. I just got to... Okay, so you just get a bungee, a bungee or a hanger. Some guys use hangers, doesn't matter. Um, anything, just to kind of make sure that you don't put any um, pressure on that, on that brake line there. So I basically just put the bungee on it and then I just hang it from the, the spring right there. And that way it keeps all the pressure off of the the brake line so it's not pulling down on the brake line there all right so now we have our brake pads exposed the, the outer and the inner pad are right here um before i do anything else i actually pop these out of here before i remove anything else so i just get a flathead you can slide it right there and right between the the pad and the rotor and you just kind of Shimmy it out of there. There's the old pad. Now as you can see, the that actually wasn't in too bad of a too bad a shape there. It had well, it's getting a little bit low, but not too bad. Alright, so we're just gonna do the same thing for the inner pad. Now you want to pay attention to some cars are different. As you can see, when I put the new pads on, I'll show you what I mean. But one of the pads is gonna have a metal clip hanging off the back of it. That's um, kind of like the warning indicator that your pads are getting low. Pay attention to where that clip is located. Obviously this one does not have it. So we know when we put the new pads on, which I'll show you the clip on the new pads, but when we put the new clip on or new pads on, we'll know that the one without the clip goes on the, on the outer edge of it. That's the clip I'm actually talking about. So now we know when we put the new pads on, um, it, we have to make sure that that clip on the back there, make sure that is in the same spot when you put the new pad on, which you, you really can't mess that part up. Just make sure you pay attention to whether it was on the inner or the outer pad. The other thing is there's a, uh, a metal, let me show it to you. Hopefully this comes out in the video. The inner pad has this like metal clip on it on the back of it you're looking at the back of the, the pad there you can you can't miss it that little metal clip right there set that aside we're gonna put that on the new pad before we put it on okay so now that we have the um, brake pads are off now the this is the the caliber bracket right here we have to get this out of there to remove the rotor so that's obviously the next step so let me See if I can get a, there's gonna be two bolts that hold this in place. Hopefully this comes out in the video. Guys, I apologize if it doesn't. I'm gonna do my best here to show you where they're at. Um, there we go. They're right here. Hopefully you can see that, that bolt and that bolt right there. They are the two bolts that need to be uh, removed to get that bracket out of there. So again, they're just 14 millimeter. Now these are these can be really kind of torqued on there. You might even need um, 
like a, uh, a longer bar to, to leverage it. Unfortunately, I don't have one at my fingertips here, so I'm just gonna have to use my standard ratchet here and hope they're not on here crazy tight. I might even have to use, even though they're really not, shouldn't really hit a ratchet with a hammer. I might have to do that because yeah, they're gonna be, they're gonna be on there kind of tight. So what I'm gonna do is just kind of grab my hammer here and just gently, hopefully it'll, there we go, it's starting to pop for me. Again, those two, these two bolts can really kind of be torqued on there. Now don't remove them all the way because if you do, that bracket's gonna fall to the floor. There's nothing else holding it there. So I just kind of loosen up one of them. Man, this one's really on there. Again, they really can be torqued on there pretty good. It's better to use uh, a longer handled ratchet or something to give you a little bit more leverage there. But again, unfortunately, I don't have one handy. So, all right. So now that they're loose, I'll get them totally off there. Again, hold it as you're loosening it up. Once you take these two out, the, uh, again, the bracket will just fall if you don't um, hold them there. So, all right, there's the bolt. That's the bottom. bracket will just slide right off now you're gonna notice um, again this is for anybody who's never really done a brake job before it has these it has two metal clips I, I I gotta be honest I'm not sure if every car has these I think most of them do um, so the, the the bracket has uh, a metal that metal clip right here and one right here you could pop those out I reuse them. I mean, the, the the new brakes do come with new brackets, but basically they're just like vibration uh, dampeners. Um, so, I mean, as long as they're not, you know, just kind of visually look at them, inspect them, just make sure nothing's, you know, broke or anything. I, I leave them on there. Sometimes the newer ones don't fit perfectly. Um, and when you go to put the new pads, slide the new pads back in, it, it can be a nightmare. So I reuse the old ones as long as they look okay, which they do. Um, I just kind of wiped them off a little bit, which I'll do that in a second, but wiped them off a little bit before I put the new pads on in the grease. So, all right, so now we're at the rotor. Let's see if this, oh, that's going to slide right off for me. It looks like beautiful. Again, on older cars or a car that hasn't had a, a brake job done in, in, a, in a while, rotors can be really kind of stuck on there pretty good. Um, you might have to get a hammer and, and since you're changing it, you don't have to worry about damaging it, obviously. So if it was stuck on there, just grab a hammer or something and just kind of bang on the, the flat surface here um, of the rotor and it'll kind of loosen it up. But this one's going to make it easy on me. Just slides right off. And that is ready to be changed. It's grooved and everything. Holy cow. All right, so we're just going to set that aside. Okay. So this is the hub you're looking at. I just kind of take a quick glance at everything, make sure everything looks all right. This is the emergency brake. If uh, if you weren't sure what we're looking at, this is the hub. That's a little rusted out, but no big deal. Some some guys, um, which uh, some guys will put um, like anti seize um, on the the flat surface of the hub here, um, so that when when you put the new rotor on, it'll keep it from um, you know being on there. Uh, the rotor 
getting stuck there. I don't really. I mean, it's it's an extra step you can take. I don't do it really, but you, you can just so you know. Um, so what, that's basically it. So we're gonna get the new rotor, pop the new rotor on, and then basically you're just reversing your steps. So we'll take you through that step by step, and we're good to go. All right, guys. Here's the new rotor. Just got it out of the box. Um, one thing I, I want to mention, um, some some rotors, when you take them out of the box, the manufacturers put uh, like some kind of oil or, or something on them. Um, I, I believe it's to, to help with so they don't rust. You want to uh, clean that off there. Um, you don't want that oil and stuff getting on your brake pads for obvious reasons. Um, oil and grease uh, on the front of the brake pads, never really a good thing. So I just, uh, you could get like brake parts cleaner and which is what I did off the video there. I, I could have shown that, I guess, but it, it's really not a big deal. All you do is just get the, the brake parts cleaner at any automotive store, um, spray it on the, the flat surface of the rotor and uh, and just wipe it off there and make sure you get all that, that oil off there. Um, now, when you're putting the new rotor on, you wanna pay attention to um, where those, those two screws, the, the Phillips head screws that we took out, the holes are right there and there, there and there. So you want to obviously make sure you line them up. So we slide the, the new rotor on. Let me grab the uh, Phillips head screws there. And again, I'm, I'm using different ones. The ones that Kia had on there for some reason, I don't know. I don't like them. When I, when I went to remove them from the, the passenger side, as I mentioned before, the one stripped so easily, it was it was literally almost like it was made out of plastic, believe it or not. I've never seen anything like it. It was crazy. So anyway, I just picked up uh, a package from Lowe's. Same exact size, obviously. Um, just hopefully a little bit better of a bolt there. Uh, so we're just going to tighten this down here. These you want to tighten um, pretty good, you know. Really kind of hand tighten them as much as you can. You want to get them nice and tight. So really kind of torque on them a little bit. Get them nice and tight. That one was loose when we when we took that old rotor off. Which is which is strange. They sh they shouldn't be. So it's a good thing I'm doing these. All right. So that's all there is to that. Now the one thing. Uh, that right there, you could actually probably see it. It's facing right to the camera. There's a little hole right there. There's a little rubber part that we have to get off the old rotor and put back in there. Um, so we grab the old rotor here. You'll see it. Right there, so you just grab a screwdriver, go to the in, go to the inside, and you can just pop that part right out. Just a little rubber cap sort of thing. So, and you just pop that right back in the the new rotor there. So that's all there is to that. Now we're ready to. Um, install the, the new pads into the bracket and install uh, get that back on the rotor and then put the, the caliber back on. So next step is um, get the um, the bracket here. Now those clips, I'm going to show you the new ones that came with the brakes just so you can see what they look like. There are these metal clips right here. Um, these might be a little harder to see because they're rusted. They're the same color as the bracket there so I don't know if you can see them well. But that's all they look like and they basically if you wanted to change them you just pop that one off put the new one on like that and that's all there is to it but again the new ones i found that the new ones they don't always fit perfectly um they fit good but not perfect uh, a lot of times anyway um so as long as those old ones are okay i just i just reuse the old ones so which that's what we're gonna do so what i'm gonna do is I, i'm gonna get um I 
I have these, they're actually Q-tips made to clean my fishing reels, um, but I use them for this as well. So I'm just gonna kinda, right in the grooves here, that's where the brake pads slide. So I'm just gonna kinda, just wipe them off there. I'm basically doing that just to get any kind of loose and then turn it around and do the other side. I don't know if you can see that, but there's like some loose rust on there. Hello? What's up, kid? Ew. Why do you have that thing on? That's my six-year-old daughter coming in to make fun of her father. What are you talking to? <laughs> I'm making a video on how to do this to show other people how to do it. <laughs> so again, once we... Why do you have that on? Because of the brake dust coming coming out and the rust flying around. Should I wipe my nose or something? Or, I, or should I be fine? Huh. You might be alright. What the heck? <laughs> Where's the tire? Alright guys, sorry about that. My baby girl needed me. My six-year-old came in and asked me why I have a light on my head and a mask on my face. <laughs> so of course she had to make fun of daddy for a second. Alright, so once uh once you have those spots kind of just wiped off make sure there's no loose particles on there if you're going to use the old ones like i do um basically next step is this is the pack of grease that came with the the brakes there i take obviously a clean you want to use a clean uh a new q-tip again i used i use these ones um they're made for cleaning my fishing reels they have like a like a, almost like a foam a lint free tip basically just Dip it in the grease here. Hopefully you can see this on the video. Just dipping it in the grease. And then I'm just applying to the spots where the where the brake pads are gonna slide there. All right, so I got the grease in the tops there and the bottoms there. Actually, I'm sorry, reverse that. Tops there and bottoms there. Um, once they're greased up, what I what I like to do is I like to put the rear pad on um, in the bracket before I put it back on. Um, just makes it a little easier. It doesn't really matter. You could do it either way. So grab the the new pad here. And I will show you that metal clip one more time that we mentioned before. That metal clip right there. Again, it was on the rear pad on the bottom. I'm sorry, on the inner pad on the bottom. So the bracket's going to go back on the rotor like that. So this, this is going to be the inner pad. That little clip is on the bottom. So you're just going to slide the new pads in. Should go in relatively easily. Sometimes you gotta kind of work them in a little bit, but shouldn't be too hard to go in. If they give you a little trouble, I just take a little, a hammer and just a very light tap. You don't wanna hit them too hard, of course, but you shouldn't have to anyway. So, all right, so the inner pad is on again. Hopefully, again, you can see this in the video, but it just slides into them grooves into the into the clips there. So now we're ready to put the um, caliber bracket back on the car. So you wanna I'm not gonna grab the camera to show you this. Uh, again, basically it's just those those two uh, bolts that I, I showed you earlier. So you just kind of fit this back on there where it goes. And then grab your two bolts that we took off here. Just 
just want to hand tighten for now. All right, once you have the, the tops and the bottoms hand tighten, just grab your, your socket there and go ahead and tighten them down there. And these are the bolts that you really kind of want to, out of all the bolts you're dealing with, these are going to probably be the tightest when you go to undo it. I, I'm not exactly sure uh, of how many, you know, how many pounds it should be tightened to, but I really kind of torqued them on there. If anybody knows who's watching this video what they should be tightened to, you know, feel free to, to comment. I'm just not sure the exact number. But you, you really want to drive them home there. All right. Now that we got that bracket back in place, rear pad is already on. I just kind of squeeze it into the rotor. And here's the outer pad. Again, you no clip on either side there. Um, so again, just like the inner pad, you just wanna slide it into these grooves. Pretty easily. And then just kinda pinch the, the outer and inner pads into the rotor. Now, um, last step is going to be to put the caliber back on. Sorry about that, I had to pause the video there. My father was calling me. Anyway, um, last step, now that the brake pads are on there, brackets on, brake pads are on. Um, last step is the caliper. Now for this, there's a number, uh, a few ways you can do what I'm about to show you. I just use a big uh, wrench like this. Um, you can use uh, a C-clamp. Um, there's actually a special tool made that uh, is made for what I'm about to show you. Uh, but again, I, a simple, now it has to be a, a big one. Um, to, I'll show you why. But a simple wrench like this will do. So what you need to do is come back over to your, your caliper here. This piston right there, hopefully you can see this. That piston right there, that pushes up into this area right here. You need to do that uh, because the new pads that you put on are obviously thicker than the ones that you took off. So if I go to put this caliper on right now, it's not going to fit. So we need to push that piston in to give this more of a gap and more room to put the caliper back on. So again, basically, a um, number of ways you can do this. I basically just take my, my wrench here. Anytime you're going to set this down, just pull, just be careful doing it because if it falls, make sure you have it in a spot that's, you know, it's not going to fall because you don't want it to yank on that brake line. You'll, you'll damage the brake line and then that's a whole other video. So, pretty much just going to clamp it like this and compress that, that piston in there. It's really... You shouldn't have to squeeze too hard, to be honest. Um, sometimes it'll give you a little bit of resistance, but it just compresses like that. And again, basically, that just gives you more of a gap right there. So we just pop that back on. Now to do this, the, the two bolts that, the two spots that this attaches right here and here, those spots actually push in and out. You want to make sure they do easily. Um, those are the sliding pins. Um, you want to make sure they push in and out relatively easily. If they don't, then they may be damaged. Um, and you might have to take care of that as well. They should slide relatively easily. You want to, uh, again, you want to make sure that slides back and forth relatively easily, which it does. So. Okay, now the last two, uh, the last step are the two, the bolts top and bottom that we took out of there. 
just tan tighten one of them. Top and bottom doesn't matter, just to hold it in place there. All right. Again, once they're hand tightened, just double check, make sure that slides back and forth easily like that, which it does, so we're good to go. All right, so grab your socket. We'll tighten these back down. And you want to make them nice and snug. Okay. And the only reason this is sliding back and forth like this right now, now that those are tightened, is because of that piston again, the piston that we compressed. When you get in your car uh, for the first time, and you step on your brakes, your brakes may feel very loose for the first couple times that you step on them. Um, that's because of that piston. So that piston's gonna decompress. Um, it's gonna slide back out up against the pads and that's what gives you the, um, the compression there. Um, always remember breaking in new pads and rotors. Um, best way to do it is um, get the car, get on a stretch of road where you can get the car up to and some guys will tell you anywhere between 35 and, and 60 um, and then get up to 30 35 40 50 somewhere around there hit the uh, brakes slow down to 5 or 10 then do it again up to up to 30 to 50 then down to 5 or 10 do that a few times um, and then after that um, get it up to a pretty good speed 35 40 and kind of really hit the brakes uh, give them a, a good a good stomp and uh, that'll that'll break them in pretty good there so so there is to it guys um hopefully you found this uh helpful um i don't claim to be an expert by any means so if uh, anybody's watching this and has any suggestions um you know feel free to, to post them underneath again i don't claim to be an expert um i think i know what i'm doing but <laughs> always open to suggestions i'm not one of those guys that are going to tell you it's my way or the highway so any suggestions feel free all right guys hope you liked it thanks for watching Hey guys, I just wanted to add this uh, last clip onto the end of this video here. I realized after I, after I turned the camera off and uh, I was about to put the tire back on the, the vehicle, I realized I didn't put that, um, if you remember when I took the inner brake pad off, that silver flat metal piece that um, was on the back of the, the inner pad, um, I didn't put that on the new one. So I just wanted to add this on to the end of the video just to let you know um, for anybody who picked up on that, I did remove the caliber. Uh, I took the caliber back off. I just basically all I did was just take the top caliber bolt off, flip the caliber um, down so I could access the, the inner pad there. And I just clipped that onto the inner pad um, and then, you know, reattach the caliper and, and put the tire on. So just wanted to add this on to the end of the video. Um, I, I don't know, you may have picked up on that, you might not have, but. For anybody who did pick up on it, I did uh, put that little uh, metal um, clip on the back of the inner pad there. Um, if anybody doesn't know what I'm talking about earlier in the video, I showed it to you when I took the old inner pad off. It was just a flat metal piece um, that comes off the back of the pad. So any questions, concerns, comments, feel free to uh, leave them below. And that's all. Hope you enjoyed the video. Thanks, guys.